Howdy folks, welcome back to the World of Tanks patch 9.5 test server with a mighty jingles. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Charioteer. Why should you be excited about the Charioteer? It's a tier 8 British turreted tank destroyer. Well, yeah. What this thing really is, is the Cromwell tier 6 medium tank with the FV4202 tier 10 medium tanks gun. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> Well, let's not get too carried away. This thing obviously doesn't get Cromwell Tier 6 medium tank matchmaking. It's a Tier 8 tank destroyer, but is that gun a little overpowered for a Tier 8 machine? Well, I don't think so. Um, and there's certainly an argument that can be made for the Charioteer keeping the 105mm gun. Have a look at the Rheinmetall Borsig, for example. That also gets a gun way out of its weight class. The same gun that you get on the Waffenträger Panzer IV at tier 9. So the precedent is there for tank destroyers to have guns that you would expect to see on a heavy or medium tank a tier higher. In fact that's pretty much been the case for a long time. Look at the ISU-152 for example. God -like. Easy there Tiger. So yes, the Charioteer. It has a pretty big gun. But it's not as powerful as the gun on the ISU. It's not as powerful technically as the gun on the Rheinmetall Balsic which has 100 more alpha damage and aims faster. So Big gun, big deal. It wouldn't be the first time a tank destroyer had a gun that enabled it to punch way above its weight class. But what makes the Charioteer different to machines like the ISU-152, the Rheinmetall Balsig, and its stablemate at Tier 8 in the British tech tree, the AT-15, is its speed and its mobility. This thing is based on the chassis of the Cromwell, and while it doesn't have the same blistering top speed as the Cromwell, it's pretty quick. It will do 52 kilometers per hour. And it has a 650 horsepower engine in a 30 ton chassis, which means that the power to weight ratio is over 21 horsepower per ton. What are the downsides? Well, it's a tier 8 Cromwell, so it has absolutely terrible, terrible armour. Uh, this thing doesn't have more than 63mm of armour anywhere, and none of that is on the turret. In order to fit these 20 pounder and 105mm guns into the turret of the charioteer, they had to seriously skimp on the armour protection. So, terrible armour, powerful gun, very quick, and it has a turret. Hmm, sounds a bit like a Hellcat, and in fact, that's what the Charioteer is. It's a tier 8 Hellcat. And I feel pretty confident in predicting that we're going to see Charioteer drivers in tier 9 and 10 games getting themselves into just as much trouble as Hellcat drivers in tier 7 and 8 games, because, well, just because you're in a fast machine with a powerful gun does not mean you have to be the first one to make contact with the enemy. But that's not going to stop you from trying, is it? <laughs> oh no, I know my audience. So anyway, let's, uh, let's see how this thing performs in battle. Of course, there are a couple of things that you have to bear in mind when you're watching games on the test server. This game was sent in by Andy Man for the win. There he is in his charioteer. And this is fairly typical matchmaking for anybody trying to drive tier 8s and 9s on the test server. You pretty much are sitting there alone in a sea of tier 10 tanks. However, it's also worth bearing in mind that a lot of the guys in the tier 10 tanks in any given game on the test server have probably never seen a tier 10 tank before in their lives. And finally, you can always count on pretty much everybody firing gold ammo as if there was a sale on the stuff. But it doesn't really matter when you're driving a machine that only has 63mm of armour at the most. And I'll guarantee you that Andy Man has been spotted. Charioteer has 370 meters of view range, which is exactly the same as the Hellcat. The Hellcat's tier 6, this is tier 8, and this isn't quite as fast as the Hellcat, in fact it's nowhere near as fast as the Hellcat. It's not a slow machine by any stretch of the imagination, but 52 km per hour is really nothing special in a tier 10 match. Hell, it's not that special in a tier 8 match. And of course he tried to rush forward, get into a spot and position against the enemy tanks on the hill, and they were all there and waiting for him long before he arrived, and he was quite lucky to get away with nothing more than track damage, with tier 10 medium tanks shooting at him. Another thing that you must bear in mind when you're driving the Charioteer is that you only have 370 meters of view range, which incidentally is exactly the same as the Hellcat, but the Hellcat's tier 6. And what that meant was that he didn't see that IS-4 until the IS-4 had fired his gun, revealing his position. You need to remember that the Charioteer is, at the end of the day, a tank destroyer. It's not a medium tank, it's not a light tank, and tier 8 tank destroyers tend to have worse view range than anything else at tier 8, and certainly anything else at tier 10. You really do need to fight the temptation to rush forward and spot targets for yourself, because A, you're just not fast enough, not at tier 8, 
and you don't have the view range for it. And the chances are that you're going to be spotted before you spot anything else. You're a tank destroyer. You're not a light tank, you're not a medium tank. Stay back. Let other people spot targets for you. You do have a very powerful gun, but you're no good to your team dead. Because the one thing that you can guarantee in World of Tanks is that if you rush forward with the big boys and you're up there with a friendly IS-7 and an IS-4 and maybe a Centurion Mark 7 and you all get spotted, there are no prizes for guessing who the enemy team are going to shoot at first. And it ain't going to be the IS-7 or the IS-4. Because you only have just over a thousand health. You have 63 millimeters of armor at the most. You're an easy kill. They're going to shoot you first if they get the chance. So don't give them the chance. Fight the urge to floor that accelerator. Do not rush forward right at the start of the game and play this thing like a Hellcat in a tier 8 match because, well, lots and lots of Hellcats die in tier 10 matches by doing exactly the same thing and you're not even as fast as a Hellcat. Stay back, at least at first. Let your team go forward, let your team spot the tanks for you. Let your team take the hits. You can use that speed later on in the game to close in against wounded tanks and finish them off. Something else that the Hellcat excels at doing. It's interesting to note, by the way, that um, while Andy Man's tank is equipped with a liberal dose of premium consumables, he's not using any premium ammunition at all. The L7 gun, which the Charioteer uses, which is the same gun that you get on the Mark 7 Centurion and the FE4202, uses APCR ammunition as standard ammunition. Premium ammunition for this gun is High Explosive Squash Head Ammunition, HESH. And HESH is basically just High Explosive Ammunition that has way higher penetration than regular High Explosive. However, with the Credit Bought Ammunition on this gun, which is APCR, you get 264mm of penetration. There it is. And that's pretty much why he's not bothering to use any HESH. This gun has 0.35 accuracy and a 2.3 second aiming time. Now you may be thinking, well crap, why aren't these shots hitting? Well, when he moves up and you actually see the way that IS-4 was using cover, yeah, that explains why he wasn't hitting. But sure as eggs is eggs. If a tier 10 tank has a choice of tanks to shoot at, and one of them's a tier 8, <laughs> that's right, he immediately took the shot at the charioteer. But this is where you can use the speed of the charioteer. Closing in on wounded tanks, using the turret to basically just humiliate them uses the wreck of the Death Star 2 as cover while he's reloading, but the IS-7 is paying no attention to him, and the IS-7's totally run out of options here. He's got enemy tanks on three sides. He knows he's screwed. Now, how about that IS-4? He's charging round there to try to outflank the IS-4 in company with, it looks like, yep, an STB-1. Now, one of the disadvantages of having this big old gun on the chariot here is that it doesn't have very good gun depression, and it also doesn't have very good gun elevation. Watch as he tries to point the gun up at this IS-4, just can't do it. He's going to need the IS-4 to help him out here, and of course that's exactly what the IS-4 does. Takes the shot, and he actually does manage to blow his tracks off, doesn't do any damage, IS-4 immediately repairs it, but again, this IS-4 is completely out of options. STB-1's gone around, he's getting shots at him, he's taken fire from all different directions. Aniban goes around, and not quite quick enough to get any extra damage in. Batchat goes charging off ahead, Batchat on less than 500 health. Andy Man trying to keep up with the Batchat, probably thinking, well, very, very dangerous machine, but he's on very low health, he's a potential one-shot kill. Surely they're going to shoot the Batchat before me, if we both pop up at the same time. Yeah, wishful thinking, Andy Man. What's this? Not the IS-3, the T-62A. There he is. Completely ignores the Batchat. <laughs> Because you've just got to put a shot into a tier 8 tank destroyer when you get the chance. IS-3 shoots the Batchat and now the T-62A finishes him off. But now the STB-1 is getting involved. The STB-1 is... He's in trouble. He's in trouble. He's in a lot of trouble. And that means, by extension, Andy Man's in a lot of trouble. Oh... T-62A's tracks, eat his shot, he's gonna take a hit. T-62A has a gun that does 320 average damage but reloads very quickly and oh, thank you T. But if you could just do that again... <laughs> Actually the IS-3 is not... The IS-3 is not going after him. Well that makes a refreshing change. Oh no, the IS-3 is going after him. <laughs> Sanity restored. But too little, too late. There's only one enemy tank left and there it is, STB-1 with the Death Star closing in on him. And I know that the STB-1 hasn't spotted 
Andy Man's Charioteer. How do I know that? Because he's not shooting at Andy Man's Charioteer. It's a tier 8 tank destroyer on 51 health. If he'd seen him, he'd be shooting at him. The STB-1 has got Death Star problems, and it looks like the STB-1's doing really, really well against that Death Star. He's, uh, the Death Star's having to back off, and he has managed to get a shot in on him, but while the STB-1 is distracted, and he's probably taking time blowing this guy's tracks off over and over and over, and denying him shots at him, well, and there we go, there's the gun elevation, he has to move up further onto the ridge in order to get a second shot into this STB-1, but a second shot is all it takes. And do not adjust your sets. Somebody is actually trying to cap on the test server. <laughs> it's just, what exactly are you trying to test by capping? <laughs> I don't know. Well, anyway, that was 3,500 damage done, 1,400 base experience, and a Holonen's medal for killing three enemy vehicles, which were at least two tiers higher than you. Andy Man for the win in the Charioteer, British Tier 8 tank destroyer. Um... It looks like a really, really good machine. It's basically a tier 8 Hellcat, but like the Hellcat, you have to resist the urge to rush forward and just be the first one to die. Because while Hellcat drivers can get away with that, the Charioteer at tier 8 isn't nearly as good at doing it as the Hellcat at tier 6. It doesn't have the relative view range that the Hellcat enjoys at tier 6, and it certainly doesn't have the Hellcat speed. The speed of the Charioteer is useful, but it's useful for closing in and killing off wounded enemies later on in the game. Or, if the map supports that kind of playstyle, and uh, and you know you can get there without being spotted along the way, then by all means use the speed to rush forward and occupy aggressive scouting positions. But remember, you're in a tank destroyer. People love killing tank destroyers. If you get spotted, you're going to get shot at. And you only have 63mm of armour at the most you're probably going to die. Having said that, it does look like being a very, very exciting machine. And I am definitely looking forward to getting one. As always, folks, take care, and I'll catch you next time.